Greetings. So this here is going to be a bit of a test reading for a short story. The short story evolved out of another short story, which evolved into something a little bit bigger than a short story. But this short story was intended to be, you know, an added piece during the editing. It's something to bring context. It was the end of the world, and I wanted to bring something that, that, uh, that was occurring in real time while the end of the world was happening because the the story this this evolved from had initially oh by the way my windows are open and so you're going to hear birds i'm a few blocks away from the train tracks it's an old country town i think it maybe has 2500 people in it maybe maximum and i have a the backyard the window facing the backyard is open and you're going to hear birds the neighbor's dog might bark. So if you if you hear any of that sort of stuff, it is what it is. So anyway, the short story that this evolved from, had the, the end of the world had already happened. It's several decades or maybe even a century. The the vagueness of that time time frame is implied in that short story. But this story evolved out of that as kind of adding context to to a uh, to what was happening at the time of the end of the world. And so as I'm working on illustrations for this for this this particular chapter in the story, I start to think about the image. And it's two people locked in a vault. The vault has everything they could ever possibly need for the rest of their lives. But it's it's two people locked in a vault. They're never going to get out. They're safe from the consequences of the end of the world. But here are these two. They're, they're employees of a base. The base gets hit. They just They just find themselves in the same room just as the door closes. And that's a short story. It's it's 21, 21 pages. I'm not quite sure what I think the draft right here. And I have a few few of the last pages to write up. It's uh, 5,800 words, give or take. So maybe about 6,500 words, maybe. But the whole point of this was to read off the first few pages. The title, I might keep the title. I'm not too keen on the title. A working title and a world expressway. I don't know. It's a short story. It's not a magnum opus. I might keep it just to have a title. Jack Clipper raced down the steel steps. He felt the air turn cold as he drew deeper into the mountain, managing each step with balance as much as speed, sensing through the hard rubber soles of his boots how much the steel steps flexed under his weight. There was no time for false emergency, no time for drills, no time for pretend. It was an implied policy that employees and technicians going up and down the steps didn't run, and used soft sole shoes so as to reduce the amount of noise that already reverberated through the stone shaft. As Jack Clipper's boots collided with each steel step, the concussive rhythm hammered through the stone shaft. Pure noise. In another place and time, Jack would endure the chewing out from the base manager. It was such a minor infraction of an unwritten policy that the authoritative action against stamping one's boots on the steps and making noise seemed absurd, like a joke. Yet such action made some sense. The base manager was a tall, emaciated fellow several years younger than Jack, with a low, almost inaudible voice behaving in a slow, sleepy manner, which masked the sweltering compulsion to manage every detail of the base. He was one of those managers you never knew was standing right behind you, overhearing every word you said until you turned around. Ah, the train. One chewing out from Mr. Wilcox wasn't a minor affair, either. 
It was a long, drawn-out process of sitting and waiting in hallways and offices to be chastised in a mild and passive tone, to fill out unnecessary forms that meant nothing other than the acknowledgement of having been chastised. As important as it was in this process to maximize the time wasted, to emphasize the importance of an otherwise insignificant disciplinary action, there was that voice containing both an accusation and sympathy. Being that the base was built on top of a mountain, or approximately close to the peak, the space was limited. There were few places to sit and wait. More often than not, it was waiting in the mess hall, the cafeteria, or in one of the cinder block breezeways connecting one part of the complex with another, enduring the chilly winds that never settled. While the base had insulary military responsibilities, there was nothing militaristic in policies running the base. This didn't stop the managers, supervisors, and general bureaucracy from pushing their menial authority with a military flair. Mr. Wilcox adored his menial authority, maximized in his mind by the menial purpose of the base in the first place. He wasn't in charge of strategic missile silos or satellite arrays or in command of a special mountain force trained in the most lethal fighting styles and techniques. The base was strategic, but only as a warehouse for basic necessities. He was a cog in a machine and was blessed as such, and would enforce that blessing upon everyone under his authority. In a city setting, it was a day-long process of being shifted from one building to another building, back and forth across the city. Sometimes the simple task of being written up or chewed out took more than a day, and as cities were rife and saturated with bureaucrats, much of the city traffic was just for the bureaucratic process, an excuse to waste time. Jack Clipper ran down the stairs. He knew this chewing out was never going to happen, not today. Jack Clipper put all his weight on the heels of his boots to emphasize a noise, and the noise was overwhelming. So there. First few pages will go from there. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day.